Hi everyone, my name's Scott. Welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything and welcome to the River Elbe in Germany. We're about 30 miles upstream from Dresden. See that ferry there? That's one of 17 similar ferry crossings between here and Dresden and today I'm going to be catching that ferry across the other side of the river and we're going to go exploring because there are some very, very interesting things over there. Sometimes I do amazingly stupid things, and today I've excelled. I left all my euros in the hotel room, promptly walked across the border from Czechia into Germany, crossed the river here in Germany to Germany, and then tried to pay with a 500 Czech Corona note. <laughs> the guy says, eh, one way or return? I said, uh, one way? That's fine, just go. <laughs> I felt so stupid. Of course it's euros, isn't it? <laughs> He was really nice actually, I think, uh, I feel sorry for these guys because uh, like I said, there's 17 of these ferries and they just go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and so for something different to happen, I think it's the highlight of their day. So he was talking to me and asking me about Scotland and why on earth did I come to this area and how did I learn about this and uh, yeah, we had a good old chit chat. Unfortunately, it only takes about 30 seconds to cross the river so it was a very short chit chat. Right, ah, I've just discovered this is the tunnel off I've been looking at and I was worried that if I yapped too long to you, I would miss it. There's no chance of missing this one. And we pass under the main Prague to Berlin railway line. This path is definitely more steeper than I expected Oops. and a little more slippery as well. Uh oh, we have the dreaded junction. Uh, that way. Whew. This is some claim. Yeah, this is a, a serious claim, but we can do this. And anyway, I can't face going back to the ferry and asking the guy for another free ride back. That's just not going to happen. Although we do have uh, the situation later on, crossing over the river again from Germany into Czechia. I'm pretty sure they accept uh, Czech Corona as well as Euros. Ooh. According to my very basic map, it's a bit of a zigzaggy affair and we are zig and zagging, so I think we're heading in the right direction. I think that's one of the things I'm heading for. Yeah. I was wondering what was in this field. I think they look like peas or something. Could be. That rocky outcrop is on my map and it's called Zirkelstein.
The Germans love their hunting. I see these kind of perches everywhere from the trains. Do you think I should go up and give one a try? Yeah, when am I going to get the chance to do that? I didn't realize there were brambles on this. I tell you, if I fall and kill myself, I've only got myself to blame, haven't I? I don't think this will be covered by my travel insurance. Aha, a mad Scotsman from Paisley. <coughs> got him. This little path leads up to the first of those rocky outcrops. That's called Kaiser Krona, which stands for Imperial Crown. Right, one, two, three. I think they all lead up to the top. Ah, just like at home, when you go hiking in Scotland and you're foolish enough to actually stop moving, all the midges descend on you. Over here, I don't think they're midges, but they taste about the same, especially if you've got your mouth open and you're gasping for air. But uh, as soon as I stop, vroom, and they realise, oh, there's something exotic, let's eat that. <sighs> Thousands of them. Uh, this is going around. It's not actually going up. Hmm, I might be going the wrong way here, guys. Couple of oak trees. Executive decision made. I'm heading back because this doesn't seem to be getting any higher in altitude. It's just going around the base of the uh, the outcrop. So we'll head back to that uh, junction. Typical of me to pick the wrong one. And we'll try number two. We'll get there eventually. Right. Let's try number two. A World War I war memorial. I wasn't expecting that. And here's World War II. This is just a reminder of how devastating war is. The Fussel family lost Erich Gerhard Helmut. That was very interesting and it does remind you that in war that lives are lost on both sides. Right, it must be path number three. If this doesn't go up to the top then I'm not sure how you get up there, but at least this one's going up as well. Lucky third attempt. It's right there ahead of us. A sandstone cave, but I think uh, it continues up that way, so let's go. You don't get a lot of sandstone in Scotland, it's mainly volcanic. But when I see sandstone like this, it reminds me of when I was brought up in Australia. The Blue Mountains, even the Sydney area, it's nothing but sandstone. And when I see scenery like this, I think, yeah, it brings back memories of the days when I used to go bushwalking. Although, to be honest, it was a lot warmer than it is today. Okay, I stopped moving for 30 seconds and those nasty German insects have found me and are telling you their mates, oi, foreigner. Right, so we're going down onto the other set of stairs for a panoramic view of the other side of the hill.
I must get one of those step counters one of these days just to see how many steps I actually do making an average video. It must be tens of thousands. Nearly at the top. <sighs> Made it. Whew. And there's a third hill. I think we should do it. It's so peaceful and quiet up here. I can hear a mower and occasionally I can hear a rooster crow, but apart from that, it's quiet. And there are no other visitors here either, which makes me think if I was to come a cropper going down these uh, stairs, no one might find me for a while, apart from the insects. So I better watch what I'm doing. Hmm, how do you get to that other one? The, uh, the path to the third hill is not that obvious. Might have to do a bit of detective work here. Must be down here. Right, I think I walked right past this. The mystery third path. This is brilliant, I'm really enjoying this. Jeez, oh, I can't believe it. Underneath this metal staircase are the original steps that were hewn out of the sandstone. I'll tell you what, I would not want to climb up those. Totally treacherous. Health and safety? Nah. Right, we're here at number three. I'm in two minds whether I want to go down there and explore those little villages. One's called Shona and one's called Reinhardsdorf. Apparently they're both very old, very historic, and Reinhardsdorf has a lime tree that dates from 1550. That's worth finding, isn't it? Yeah, let's go for a walk down there. The old timey museum seemed to have a fire engine and about six motorbikes. I couldn't get it anyway because it was geschlossen, closed. This is very pretty. In case you were wondering, Schöne is a Waldhufendorf or a rural settlement and it dates from 1379. And I've just spotted a little information plaque over there. That was a cool old fire engine, and that's the fire station behind me, where I expect there's a fire engine a little more modern sitting here waiting for use. I'm guessing that's the case anyway, otherwise the one I just saw could just be maybe a, a local community fire engine. I'm just coming into Reinhardsdorf now. That's another one of these Waldhufendorfs I was telling you about, the rural settlements. And I've just seen the spire of the church, 1685. How it was built. Ich begrüße Sie ganz herzlich in unserer Sicht 
das erste Mal urkundlich erwähnt und wurde von der böhmisch-bärischen dann auch mit nach der Reformation äh Well guys, today I was reminded how beautiful rural Germany is. The cities have their, their culture and their attractions, but it's when you get off the beaten track and come into rural Germany, you really do see some beautiful things. And today exceeded expectations. It was gorgeous, and the Kaiser Krona area was spectacular as well. I'm so glad I came, and I'm so glad you guys came with me as well. So thanks very much for watching the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time.